Hello Utah Jazz fans, welcome to the channel. Subscribe to the channel to not miss any news and hit the notification bell. Let's go to the news. The Jazz shown once more that they are a team that can not only withstand offensive runs from the opposition but also hold on to leads into the final seconds of the game. In Los Angeles on Friday night, the Utah Jazz defeated the Los Angeles Lakers 130-116. The Jazz shown once more that they are a team that can not only withstand offensive runs from the opposition but also hold on to leads into the final seconds of the game. This time, they succeeded with five players scoring in double figures, 31 assists, only eight turnovers, and a team shooting percentage of 50.5% overall, 42.5% from three-point range, and 90% at the charity stripe. Lori Markkinen was just outstanding once more, he was undoubtedly the game's best player overall, finishing with 27 points, 13 rebounds, for assists, a block, and a steal. However, there were certain other players and circumstances in this game that really stood out and merited a closer examination. Will Hardy's challenge and Mike Conley's takeover? Jordan Clarkson was called for basket interference with 6.26 left in the fourth quarter. He put up a shot and then it looked like it was coming off the rim and he jumped to tip it but at the very last second, within maybe an inch of the ball, did not touch it. In real time, it was a very hard call. Head coach Will Hardy appealed the call because Clarkson was sure that he hadn't touched the ball. The basket was counted after the call was reversed, giving the Jazz a 10-point advantage. Mike Conley came back into the game at that point and really took over, propelling the Jazz to a convincing victory. He made his typical floater, drove and got into the lane, hit a three-pointer fairly quickly, drew a foul, and was locked in defensively. In that span, he scored eight of his 15 points. Mike is aware of the situation, Hardy added. He had taken a little seat to rest and stretch his legs. Then, when Mike entered the game, he appeared alert and really had a burst, hitting a great three-pointer before being able to move downhill and enter the paint. At this point, I don't need to explain anything to Mike about the game's events and how to interpret them. The performance that enraged Will Hardy. Hardy was furious when Lonnie Walker first stole the ball with little over two minutes remaining in the first half and ran coast to coast for a slam on the opposite end. The issue was that following the steal, Walker wasn't alone in front of the defenders. As you can see in the video below, Colin Sexton was in front of Walker at the start of the play, and by the time the play was over, four jazz players were standing in the paint admiring Walker's slam dunk. Sexton was attempting to decide between guarding Westbrook and guarding Walker because he believed Walker would pass the ball to Westbrook. But he ended up doing neither, and he was left in a limbo where he could do nothing but watch the ball. Hardy yelled and gesticulated as he walked onto the court and immediately called a timeout. At the end of the video, Hardy enters the screen on the left. He was not happy, to put it mildly, and used some quite strong language. Sexton admitted, I should have taken a charge or fouled. He had to call the timeout because it was one of those plays where the momentum shifted. I must be aware that if I foul, it would force them to attempt a free shot, therefore I must take the foul immediately while preventing the slam. Since the momentum changed after his dunk, he was forced to burn a timeout. In Sexton's defense, it would have been wise to play it safe and deny Westbrook the lob, and the momentum wasn't exactly in the Lakers' favor at that time. But as the players descended the court, Hardy yelled at Sexton to commit to anything and end the play, no matter what it took. That play really bothered me, Hardy said. No one on our squad picked up the ball after Lonnie Walker dunk from 94 feet away, right-handed, in the middle of the lane. Nobody spoke. While he was dunking it in transition, we had a few players that really wound up under the basket. And for our group, that's intolerable. I have to keep my composure in front of the team a lot of the time, but I also need to let loose occasionally. The jazz musicians have praised Hardy for being cool, collected, humorous, kind, and supportive, but they have also praised him for his fiery side, where he holds them to a high standard. Jared Vanderbilt, the rebounding machine, is described as a crazy. Sexton remarked, he gets rowdy, and that's what we need. I get the impression that everyone here plays that way. If you annoy us, we'll hit you. 
either of us. Even Mike, who is usually peaceful, can be agitated if provoked. The jazz players welcome some tough love from Hardy because, despite their brief association with him, they have confidence in him and respect his desire for victory. Off the bench, Russell Westbrook. Westbrook averaged just 10.3 points per game and shot 8.3% from beyond the arc in the three games he started for the Lakers this year. Not good. Westbrook's demotion to the bench for the Lakers has caused some controversy, and it's been unclear whether the guard will accept the position. However, he actually looked fairly well on Friday with the reserve team. He was making terrific reads, hitting his first three three-pointers, and playing effectively with the other players, especially one Toscano Anderson. I haven't watched every Lakers game, therefore I can't say for sure what the solution is for the club that had a 0-5 start to the year. However, doing this might have been a wise decision. Kelly Olenek said, I think he's incredibly good off the bench because he makes that bench unit super dynamic. You have a triple-double machine who is a star coming off the bench, after all. It's undoubtedly difficult for other benches to compete with them. He ended with 26 points, 6 assists, and a final field goal percentage of both 64.3 and 60%. That is a noticeable difference.